Hi everyone, it's Paola. I am really excited to sit down and film this today because I know a lot of you are a bit more interested in my life <laughs> and I'm more interested in sharing my life and I've been doing that lately. If you're new here and you're like, what are you talking about? I'm an American living in Australia and I'm a graphic designer and this whole channel is about graphic design, so subscribe. So I thought I'd give some advice and tips and all that and I feel like this can apply to a lot of different people on how I moved to Australia, how I moved to a new country, and then how I started working in a new country. And I know that's like probably a topic you guys are interested in, but also like I think this can apply to everyone because if you are just starting as a graphic designer or freelancer, I have some tips for that, like how to get your foot in the door with a lot of different things because this is my story about, about how I did it in moving to Australia. So a bit about me, I know that some of you guys are still probably don't know why I even moved here. Um, I moved here for my husband. I've talked about that a bunch of different times. So what I got is a partner visa to move here. So I applied for a partner visa with a partner who sponsors me. And then that's my pathway into like permanent residency. So there's a lot of different ways that you can move to a new place. I mean, obviously mine is very specific and I, I don't think I have like the advice for that, but I, there's tons of different visas, especially for Australia. There's working visas and visas to get work rights and all of that. So first, I guess you have to address what type of visa you need to get. And if you are really wanting to move to a new place, especially if you're wanting to move to go then be a freelancer, um, you have to kind of set that up for yourself and figure out what kind of work rights you can get in the place you're moving to, to then work for yourself and not for a company. There are also tons of visas for applying to work at companies and companies from your country can sponsor you to go to another country. That's also a pathway to get to a new country if that's your plan. Unfortunately, visas are so expensive. Mine was so incredibly expensive. I spent most of my savings on this and moving here to this new country so that's why it's always a really big sacrifice and a really big challenge but i know that people are always moving and trying new things and you know you might be one of those people so just heads up new countries definitely want you to have the funds to support yourself and have the right visa to come in i personally coming in on a partner visa did not have work rights right away because my visa was still under processing so what's different about a partner visa is i can come to the country and you know stay with my partner be with my partner while i await like the decisions and then luckily i got it granted and then i got work rights so if i wanted work rights in the interim i had to apply for it and like that was a whole thing i had to prove like i was needing money and all this stuff so i didn't do it in the time i was waiting so i wasn't working in australia at all i was just kind of waiting it out so yes if you're moving to a new country you're going to need work rights that's very important and i had to wait for it so it was kind of a weird process for me but those are kind of the different avenues like work sponsored or applying for a working visa or applying for another visa where you can figure that out later um just make sure that what you're doing is legal and all of that i had an immigration lawyer and everything because i just wanted to make sure i had it down and that it's still kind of a process even now like i'm waiting for permanent residency on top of what i have i have temporary residency but at least i have work rights i would say that if you're moving to then find a job in the country you're moving to the important things are like what language barrier and work culture and actually finding out about the job market is it really oversaturated is it you know, are there tons of graphic designers? I guess we're talking about that specifically. Are there tons of graphic designers in your field working at what you want to do in the country you're going to? Are there a lot of job openings? I would say start job hunting early and start looking at all of that early if that's what your plan is, because job hunting is really hard everywhere around the world now. And I think it can be really exhausting and a really big process. And, you know, you want to be prepared ahead of time so that you're not ending up in a place you don't want to be when you get to the country. Work culture is really important to understand too. Like, is it different from the country you're from? Is the culture different just in general? Because like language, obviously, like if you speak another language, like that's going to bring in a whole different aspect to it. Um, I moved to an English speaking country. So here I have already noticed differences just in how people work and how people do even design jobs, like even creative jobs, like people here are much more chill in australia than they are in the u.s and people say that like oh sydney's like the busiest place in australia like it's oh it's sydney's such a busy city i'm like it's so calm compared to like anywhere in the u.s like everyone is just so much more laid back and just really nice and there's not like this competitive intenseness that a lot of companies and individuals have 
at U.S. companies. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's just something I've noticed, like particularly me. Maybe I just find U.S. people intense. Um, maybe I've just meshed really well with Australians, which is good, obviously, because I live here. But like, that's kind of the vibe I've picked up. And I just feel like that has helped me at least with networking. Networking, so <laughs> um, making friends, networking, all of that kind of ties into one. I met a couple people from Instagram and TikTok and like became friends with them and they all work in creative jobs too. And that has helped me professionally as well. So it's not like about making friends, obviously to say like, I want a job through you and that's why I'm your friend. Like that's <laughs> horrible, don't do that. But I've met friends who work in the design field here and that has helped me get my foot in the door. So making friends, finding people, even just finding like events and places to connect with people, like especially online through social media, like upcoming events at museums or upcoming events like for creatives, like that type of stuff, that can really help you get your foot in the door, especially if you are a freelancer in a new country and you come to the country and you're like, great i have nowhere to work i have no friends like that can be really overwhelming and that's kind of what happened to me right so i made sure to like reach out to people right away i said yes to everything so i was like okay i'm gonna go hang out with this person and just see how it goes and then now i have friends who are designers as well and they have set me up with people that they know in the community the design community here and now I'm getting like interviews, I'm getting like a couple jobs here and there, and I'm getting in the know with the people who work here and live here as well. So that's definitely my really big tip for freelancers is like, if you're going to a new country, if you're going to a new place, learn the work culture and the workflow and how the people are with that and just like become people's friends and go to events and learn things from them and then you'll probably be like oh that person knows that person and then they'll be like oh let me introduce you to this person and then you're just like working and vibing and you can find people who you like and then they might have a job for you because they usually do <laughs> and i know saying networking can be challenging and definitely like if you're living in the same place if you're watching this video and you're not planning on moving like hopefully i can still help you in some way because networking is really important and i still think that those things can apply and they don't need to be so high pressure like you don't need to go to a networking event like you don't need to do these things you need to just like put yourself out there reach out to people like directly apply to things email people and be like hey are you looking for this type of work like that type of stuff that gets your name out there. That gets your foot in the door. Like I've said, like I have met people here just by being friends with them and working with them and having a, a similar job. I, I've told them, I'm like, oh, I'm looking for something. I'm, I'm looking for some work. And then they go, oh, okay. I actually have some work for you because I'm a designer and I have some people who are needing something. I'm not doing the job. Do you want to take the job? Like talk to them. And it's not a guarantee. <laughs> it's just getting it out there and i think that's just a great way to live life i've been doing that lately and putting myself out there more and yes it opens myself up to a bit more rejection but it opens myself up to possibilities and feeling really productive and like i'm making moves and doing things myself you know feeling like independent and i think that's really important if you're moving feeling independent and feeling in control of your life moving can be really hard and overwhelming. I have been adjusting for a year and a half now and it's been really hard. And so putting myself out there like this has been scary and vulnerable, but it's been really rewarding because I feel like I'm actually working here in the country and handling it in a whole new way than I've ever done before. If you are bad at all this <laughs> and all of the networking and all of that, I would say at least try to make a few friends that are in the design field as well and that can at least show you around and show you what it's like in the design scene where you're moving or you know go to things with you go to events go to art galleries and do fun creative things together at least reach out to someone and become a friend don't have to network no pressure there but at least have someone in the country who can kind of show you the ropes of the place so if you're moving to a new place and you've got like the visa figured out you've got like the work stuff figured out there's other little details you kind of need to know like you need to figure out your taxes here especially as a freelancer i have like i had to get a tax file number to make sure i could work and like all those little things um resumes could be different in the country you're living in um here in australia resumes and cvs are the same kind of an interchangeable word they're different things in the US, um, but in Australia, that means the same thing. And it also always has to be 
over one page just because it has to have a lot of information it has to look really professional and that's an over one page resume so in the u.s that's a different story it's usually one page and keep it all condensed right so there's lots of different little things like that and hopefully i mean you can do the research of the country you're moving to but in australia that's my advice on moving um tax file number like figuring that out i just saw a tiktok of a woman in france who was like oh i have to go like fix all my paperwork because i signed up like my taxes as an independent business or something instead of an independent freelancer and then they were paying way more tax by accident so yeah all of that you need to make sure that you have together if you're going to be working in the country especially as a freelancer because not everyone is there for you you gotta you know get yourself an accountant and you don't have a company to back you up and tell you all this stuff right moving can be really scary and it's really overwhelming and i know i've been through it and look i'm working as a graphic designer now i was working as a graphic designer in the u.s and moving here has just been like the slightest of adjustments it's really just about learning what people are like here and how they work and then getting myself out there because no one knew who i was right so that's all it really is and i know that the whole process can feel like a lot like the paperwork part the visa part that all probably was the hardest part of it but i did it i'm here i'm literally physically here now and i am living my life and doing my work and it feels so rewarding to like have made it this far so hopefully i can at least encourage you if you are wanting to or like a little bit confused on how to get yourself out there how to move to australia even because yeah i went through a partner visa way and it's just like a little bit different if you have more questions about how i actually did it and how i moved to australia if you're just like randomly watching this video let me know and I will reply to you and let you guys know more information that I have. Um, yeah, being a graphic designer is really fun here. I really, really do enjoy it in Australia more than even the US. So I'm pretty happy. It's definitely an adjustment, but I'm happy. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for watching. Let me know any questions you have in the comments. We can talk way more about this, but I really wanted to make this video. Hopefully it helped a few of you and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye. This was lovely. What a fun little video to make. Okay, I'm happy. I'm glad I shared this with you guys. Bye.